Hi again then guys and welcome to yet another specific look at a car from the 1.15 patch and as with a couple of other customs and hot rods and show cars from prior in the franchise this wasn't a car that initially wowed me. Now, to be honest, that's not really much to do with the fact that it's a Mustang, because any who have been around on this channel for a while will probably have heard me say that I'm not a huge Mustang fan. I love the engines, they sound fantastic, there are certain Mustangs which I do really like, but in general, I'm not a huge fan of the range. Then again, there aren't many muscle car ranges or pony car ranges that I am a massive fan of. I tend to like very specific models throughout any given car's lineage. And for me, the older Mustangs do tend to be the more desirable ones when it comes to the visuals. The newer ones, for obvious reasons, are much better around a track, but the old ones are icons for a reason. Now, what this car does is very clever. This is the exact kind of imagination that I like to see from a project car, because this is the kind of thing that I would like to do. Not necessarily this specific project, but something like this. Taking not just specific components from two cars and putting them together, because let's face it, people do that all the time. That's what engine swaps are all about. But it's more than that. It's about combining the essence of two vehicles. Two cars which could be completely different, in fact. And if you think about it, a lot of the cars that I've mentioned as projects in the past, stuff like gas turbine powered Shelby Cobras, they combine very disparate components and put them together in a way that can actually work very well and complement each other. Now this is a perfect example of that, but at the same time, they go one step further by making it even brand synergized, because both of the cars that they're combining are from Ford. So it's about as perfect as you could want this kind of build to be. Now technically speaking, the car is kind of like three vehicles combined, because the essence of the Mach 40, built of course by Eckert's Rods and Customs, is combining a Mach 1 Mustang, one of the most iconic ever, of course, of the lineup, and probably Ford's most iconic race car ever, the GT40. But that's where it gets a little bit derivative, because technically it's not a GT40 and a Mach 1, even though that's what the name would suggest, Mach 40, it's actually a Mach 1 and a Ford GT because it's based on the newer tech in the GT40 line. So, we know what they mean, but if you want to get technical, it's a GT, not a GT40. However, of course, it is the modern day interpretation of it, so who's splitting hairs? That means that the essential concept is already a good one. If you take a modern Ford GT engine, the 5.4 litre supercharged V8, and put that into a classic Mustang with, say, wider tyres, better suspension, better brakes, that could be a great show car, and at the very least, it would make for a great rival to stuff like the Nova, which we have in the game, this really powerful muscle show car, which is great for drifting, potentially good for drag, maybe not so much on the handling side of things, but who really cares, it's not that kind of car. But what I really like is that they went the extra mile with this one. They made it more than just your run-of-the-mill engine swap, they made it a car swap, because this re-envisions the Mustang not as if it were combined with the GT40, but if it in effect was a GT40. So this is a mid-engine Mustang with a much wider, lower, more squat stance. Again, directly inspired by the Ford GT and, of course, the GT40. Now, in terms of the actual shape of the car, it's much closer to, of course, the Mustang than it is the Ford. And I like that they chose to do that. The car itself doesn't blend the visual styles of both in a direct way. It's more so that it has the look of a Mustang with the shape and the layout of a GT. That's a pretty cool way to combine them, because it doesn't really work the other way around. If you tried to make something with the shape of a Mustang, but the actual visuals of a Ford GT40, that would look kind of weird. So this way around was certainly the good way to go. Now in terms of power, torque, and even the weight to some degree, it's pretty strong across the board. The engine, as I already said, is that 5.4 litre. It's much more heavily modified than when you get it from Ford, around 550 horsepower from the factory. This one's putting out 787, 780 pound-feet of torque as well, so plenty of power, plenty of shove. It only weighs 1588 kilos, which is actually a similar kind of weight to what the GT weighs anyway. So that's pretty good. It could easily be much, much heavier than that. And of course, that does make it lighter than the Mach 1 
Mustang. Now the horsepower per tonne is just under 500, and that's before you've done anything to it. So the raw potential of this car is most definitely there. And the cream of the crop on top is that this is an N-Class vehicle. Even though everything would point toward it justifiably almost being a Group X car alongside other wacky creations like the Drift Subaru, I'm glad that they didn't do that, because putting it in the N-Classes makes it so much more useful, especially when you've got the kind of power range that this car has. You can take the power down, you can hike it up by quite a lot, and performance, if it wasn't already readily apparent, is great. The Ford GT, in terms of its tuning potential, and especially its responsiveness to tuning, I would put up there with stuff like the Supra and the Skyline, because although a lot of people only look to Japanese imports for insane tuning potential, the Ford GT's engine is one of the most remarkable in terms of what it's capable of, especially when it's actually in a Ford GT. It's a pairing that works, as I said, remarkably well, and the Ford GT commonly breaks stuff like standing mile speed records. Everyone rants and raves about how quick that Koenigsegger Gira RS was at around 285 miles per hour. Ford already did that, or at least somebody did that with a tuned Ford GT. Now, of course, that car had a parachute, it wasn't exactly a production scale machine, far from it, but the Ford did it before Koenigsegg did. So, yeah, the Koenigsegg is awesome, but the Ford did it as well. So the raw potential that the car has is readily apparent. It's an extremely fast car, and the funny thing is, the Ford GT in real life can be made so quick that it actually borders on being as fast in the real world as it is in Gran Turismo 6. And if any car can come close to those kind of speeds in the real world, that's insane, and the Ford can do that. So when you combine that with something as iconic as a Mach 1 Mustang, that's a pretty cool combination, even to somebody who, like me, is not a fan of the Mustang range. Now, all of that being said, that was what I found out after looking into the car. When I first saw that the car was announced, I didn't really care for it. I didn't care for the trans camera particularly either, so why would I be excited for it? I wasn't excited until I actually drove the car and then looked into its purpose, because the purpose makes me love the car. That's awesome. I love the concept behind it. But then when you actually drive it, as you can see in this video, this thing loves to drift. And I have to say, it's one of the best examples of a mid-engine drift car which we've ever had in Gran Turismo. This thing is superb for drifting. It's easy to hold the drift. It's easy to initiate it. The car pretty much does it for itself. And despite the fact that you're putting out a similar level of power to many supercars or even hypercars, it controls itself very well because although it may look like a primitive muscle car in some ways, you got to remember that underneath, it's essentially a GT and the Ford GT is a very capable track car. So overall, if you haven't tried this one yet, maybe like me you weren't really stoked for it, give it a try because for 300 grand, it's pretty affordable considering how fast it is, supercar performance for, in effect, supercar money, or cheaper than some, and it's a whole lot of fun. This is a fantastic example, I would say, of the kind of show cars that I would want to see in Gran Turismo. Not just something that has a huge turbo or a stupid body kit, but something that is genuinely clever, inspired, and riffing on a combination of reality in a fantasy way. I love that. This car shouldn't exist, but it does. And that's awesome. So that's it for this review. Of course, I'll see you guys next time. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.